People's Artist of Kazakhstan, Kairat Baibasinev, occupies a special place in the art of performing traditional Kazakh songs. Even the harshest music critics agree that his voice is the standard of baritone. Throughout his entire career, he followed his great mentors and did not stray from this path. Today, he is already leading his students who will continue his work in the future. You had some health problems. How do you feel now? Thank God, now everything is fine. There is a hospital of the Council of Ministers in Almaty where poets, writers, elders and intellectuals undergo treatment. They all meet after the medical procedures and talk. Once, two writers met and one asked the other, What happened to you? A man told about his diagnosis, the other man answered, Ah, I have even more diseases. It hurts here, it hurts there. So they began to compare their illnesses and argue. One of them couldn't stand it, lost his temper and cried. It hurts so much that your illness couldn't be compared to mine. To tell the truth, I suffered a hemorrhagic stroke, but now I'm doing well. I'm not giving up. When I was transferred from the intensive care unit, I looked in the mirror to see if my face was okay, if it wasn't distorted. I was very afraid that I had face paralysis. What would people say then? But thanks to doctors and treatment, I recovered. Thank God everything is fine. On the other hand, I thought it must have been a sign from the heaven. I have already retired and I probably need to stop being as active as before and slow down a little, so I calm myself down. Take care now. Are you singing? Yes, I sing. The voice is also okay. There were some problems with my hands, it was difficult to play the dombra, but now I can. I teach at the Kazakh National University, train young singers, teach them to sing and show what I can. This work inspires me and does not let me lose heart. Then let's continue our conversation with a song. Perfectly. Last year you turned 70. What does a person who has reached such a venerable age think most of all? As the Russians say, it is a transitional age between youth and old age, when you still don't want to admit that you are already old. But you don't want to let go of youth either, so I feel like I am suspended. Now I still cannot believe that I am already 70. Now people live long. Many of our elders are still alive and full of strength. Some have reached 80 years and some are still working at 84. Looking at them, I feel very young. You 
In your youth, you were nicknamed Bala Birjan, Young Birjan. You received a personal blessing from famous Nurgi Satlendiev, and in general, you met many eminent people during your lifetime when you were a student. What would you like to say about your mentors and teachers? Kazakh say that a man inherits the spirit of his people and homeland. It's probably true. For example, I was born in Karaganda region in Jana Arka. A lot of talented people live there. I saw Igali Komarov. He sang beautifully and he was the pearl of any event. We always listened to him with bated breath. There was also a popular singer named Nurgazi. When Jusubek Yelabekov came on tour to our district, he always stayed at Nurgazi's house. There were many such wonderful performers and singers. We used to imitate each other. Art is about to admire, listen to and know and be in love with all this. If you have no talent, then no matter how much you study, five years or ten, all this will become only your education. But in fact, you will not work and you will never delight the public. In the village, we used to gather in the evenings, play the Dombra, and it was a kind of orchestra. The neighboring children saw this and they asked their parents to buy them a Dombra and they had a desire to sing and play. Almost all kids in the village played the Dombra. My father worked as a shoemaker, but at the same time he played both Corbeas and Dombra and sewed shoes. He was a great master. He made both Corbeas and Dombra. He was a real craftsman. My father was from a large family with five sons and they were all craftsmen. Have you inherited your father's skill? Yes, I did. Unfortunately, now I do not have time to do something with my hands. But I can make, for example, Dombra. I once made one Dombra for the younger brother of our singer, Ramazan Stamgaziev, whose name was Yarlan. He was my student. Now he is no longer alive, and that Dombra is now in the museum. I saw it not so long ago. My younger brother, Akat, is Kui performer. We grew up in the same family, one singer and my Kui performer. Akat worked in Jeska's Gun. Now he works in Nur Sultan. My son is an artist. All of his five children, my grandchildren, play the Dombra. Do they love art as much as you do? No, they have no passion for art, but they have a very good hearing. Having heard a melody once, they can play it. I think it was genetically passed on to my grandchildren, but they do not have an internal, dynamic desire to learn. Looking at this, I believe that such an insane desire for art either appears in childhood or never. After all, everything is by the will of the Almighty. We were orphans. Our father died early, and when I was graduating the school, my mother said, if you enter the Terranarian Institute in Almaty and become a zootechnician, we will not be hungry. She submitted my documents to that technical institute. At the same time, I received a letter from the Ministry of Culture. A person I respected, Galim Sarbasov, said that I won't get the second proposal. He promised me that if I won't be able to enter the Kazakh pop studio, then next year he would help me enter where I decide. So I followed him. You could have easily gone to the opera, but you went to traditional singing. What have you found and what have you lost by making this choice? I already played the Dombra when I was five years old. Love for Dombra was always in my blood and in my soul. Dombra and traditional art were everything for me. Of course, I can sing opera and I love opera. Later, of course, I entered the conservatory to learn musical notation. Since I was a singer, I had to learn to read music literature, find materials in the archives. A singer needs knowledge, not just the ability to play the Dombra and sing. Opera singer Murat Musabayev was my teacher and he told me to quit the Dombra and come to the opera. But I disagreed. I am a traditional singer and I came only for the knowledge I needed. That's what I said, turned around and left. In fact, I could do both. 
Әлпісе екеуінде алып жүргі болатын ет, таза енді батыстық. Үзгідегімес, мысалдан, ғарекендер ғарифола құрбан ғалеп, For example, Garifula Kurmangaliev, Manarbek Yarjanov, Kurmanbek Jandarbekov also performed opera. Everybody sang opera in traditional Kazakh Kala. Recently, I regret that we have all Europeanized. We do not perform Kazakh songs and Kazakh opera correctly. For this, one needs to learn Kazakh performance. Composer Sadiq Mukhamedjanov suggested me to try to sing opera in the Kazakh manner, because there are no people who perform Kazakh opera. All were Europeanized. In their performances, the meaning and presentation disappear, respectively, the song does not find its listener. I found a reason to refuse, explaining that I am small, my eyes do not see on the stage, I may not see the conductor and generally go to the wrong place. I said so because of my love and devotion to Dombra, in my dreams, and in reality I see only Dombra. Earlier, when the elders praised the singers, they said that when a singer sang on the hill of one village, he could be heard in the neighboring village several kilometers away. Is this an exaggeration, or were they really such singers? No, this is not an exaggeration. It is more about the weather. I remember once we went to the Moinkum area with Ilya Zhakanov and other people. We were well greeted and in the evening went to visit the shepherds, who invited us to Dastar Khan. When we went outside, I sang there. It was a starry night, it was quiet, and there was no wind at all. The next day we were invited by Aksakal Jazulbek Kwanishbaev, and two men were arguing strongly at his house. The thing was that along the river, four to six kilometers away, other shepherds lived and they were offended that they were not invited to listen to the songs. It turns out that they heard us at a distance of four to six kilometers. It was approximately 12 a.m. There was total silence, beautiful weather. There was a starry sky. In such weather conditions, the song is spread throughout the village. Мен шеркін кеудемді керіп бір өлің айтеш дегенде, сонда жайға тұнық ауада жан жаққа таралы деген. Қыс кезінде концерттік сапармен шықтық дейді жүстіпе келебе көп айтады. Әміре бастыған басқылар бар, бәріміз шығып. Жүсіп Бәк Елебеков once told how they went on tour in winter. Amrea Kashalbaev and other singers were with him. At that time, the stages were not everywhere and during those tours they performed in some old barn. Singers started singing one by one. Amrea always performed last, because they did not want to let him go and sometimes he was asked to sing until morning. After about the tenth song people came on horseback. They greeted the guests and said, we are sorry that we rush in at night. We just heard the voice of Amre at a distance of 12 kilometers and came to listen. If possible, sing for us again. It turns out that they heard him singing 12 kilometers away from the village. These are wonderful voices. For example, the voice of Kali Bajanov, Ukili Iberai. Sabit Mukhanov wrote that once people told Ukili Iberai, let's see the strength of your voice, sing please. When he began singing at the top of his voice, a striped cat lying next to him jumped into the burning stove. That's the story. <laughs> Жан 
Would you sing Kazil a Sikh song for us, please? Each song has its own story and there are controversies about many of them. Much has been said about this, especially recently. Would you like to tell us the story of a song about which we only recently learned the truth? During the Soviet Union, many folk songs were banned. Censorship removed many words, for example, such as Allah. They rewrote poems, added other words. For example, the song Balkadi Shah has following lines. Your husband is an old man, he is 85 years old. In fact, this is a distortion of the meaning towards the issue of gender injustice. The censorship sought to show that, allegedly, Kazakhs married their daughters to old people, sold them for livestock. This was such propaganda. In fact, Balkadi Shah married her peer, a young man named Jamal Khan. They had children. One of their descendants now works at Shabbat University. This story took place somewhere in Akmola region, where at the same time Akan Seri came to one event, and there, as elsewhere, the people greeted him with a great enthusiasm. Young, talented, beautiful people were supposed to sit next to him. Balkadi Shah, a beautiful and talented girl, sat near Akan Seri. Later in the evening, under the pretext that mother asked Balkadi Shah to visit her, two daughters-in-law came pick her. Kazakhs say the girl gets bans from 40 households. Akan Siri had sincere conversations, sang well, and then he said to her, not one but two daughters-in-law came for you. Go, Kadi Shah. In this song he said goodbye to her, despite the fact that he did not want to let her go, but he had to. In fact, there was no love or rather romantic feelings between them. We met twice to discuss this song Dudarai on TV programs. In general, everyone says that its author is Mariam, but in fact, the author is Ulibai, a native of Korgaljin. He was a friend of Dudar and he composed this song as a joke. Mariam was in love with Dudar. He was tall with curly hair. So looking at them, Ulibai composed this song. Later, people said that this was song of Mariam. Then the opera Dudarai appeared with the aim of promoting international relations between Russians and Kazakhs. Mariam was given the title of the honored worker for the song. Then Mariam came to Korgaljin, arranged the celebration and said, Ulibai, thanks to you I became popular. If not for you, what a singer I am. And put a chapan on Ulibai as a sign of respect. 
The descendants of both Mariam and Dulibai said that they would not argue and defend authorship, but that people should know. Their song is already more than 100 years old and it is already in history. We must revive the history of this song because the people must know the truth. This is the solution we have to come to. Now the singing art of Kazakhs is divided into schools. Firstly, is this correct? And secondly, what other innovations would you like to talk about? I am against the division into schools. We have traveled all over the country, visited all the villages, and no one has ever asked me which school I represent. I also did not say which school I represent. Wherever I go, to the west, east or south, people warmly welcome me. The people appreciate the art, the singer's skill and the performance. We say a folk song, but we don't know where exactly the song originated. In Jetesu or Ratirao, we don't know that. Now the song is announced as the song of Mukit, Akan or Kenen. But they do not say the song of the Mukit's school or the Kenen's school. There is no such comparison. It all came later. I think that this is a wrong division, like division into genders. Wherever you go, if you perform well, sing a song beautifully, you will be applauded and invited again. We have art and a lot of songs, we just have to collect it bit by bit. I always tell my students, when you leave for the village on vacation, do not waste your time. Write down what songs you have in your village, learn from your elders. We have to put it all together. Even now there are many know-it-alls, they believe the rumors, they don't read, they don't dig archives in search of the truth, instead they spread rumors. I'm against it. I talked a lot about all these topics with the famous composer and music researcher Yezakovich, and so he said, Zantayevich and I collected songs from many, from Akhmet Baitursinov, Ilyas Jansugurov, Kanish Satpayev. I know history. He said, if there is any dispute, come to me. I will tell you what is true and what is not. Thirteen songs by Ilyas Jansugurov were recorded by Yezakovich. For example, songs of Jetisu. He showed me one yellow folder and said that only one song had no verses, and he wrote the verses himself. On the corner of the paper it was written Ilyas Jansugurov. This does not mean that he is the author, but that he recorded these songs with him. Now people confuse, is the author this or that person, and confuse others. What Kazakh songs would you like to revive? There was one famous poet, Kultuma, who lived in this area. He had many songs and they even were included in Abai's opera. At one time he was a batir and opposed the Tsarist regime. Therefore later his name was banned. I revived approximately 20 songs of him and included them into my book. There are many songs of the poet Kotema. Here's one of them. Sondaday, Sherkin Kumay, 
bom pa ba 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 May your work for the revival of national art always be appreciated. Be healthy. Thanks. Wish all the best to you too.